So, as promised, let's return to Washington. Donald Trump's administration achieving things or consuming itself. Uh, just a little earlier, we were hearing Anthony Scaramucci say he was more used to front-stabbing than backstabbing. Interestingly, since that, he's denied accusing the president's chief of staff of leaking. That's been all over Twitter in the last few hours. Well, let's go to Washington, and uh, we're joined by John Seifer, a former CIA officer who spent time stationed in Moscow. And uh, uh, we have Michael Caputo, a former advisor to Donald Trump, but also joining us here on the programme. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Uh, John Seifer, to you, first of all, achieving things or consuming itself? Well, I, I think these, these comments and this chaos may be appealing to certain partisan elements in our society, but I don't see much governing. So I, I, would, I would go on the uh, consuming itself at this point. And Michael, your thoughts, because I mean, you know how Donald Trump thinks. Uh, has he entered siege mentality, do you think? No, I don't think so. I think, as, as John said, it's, it's actually it depends on what side of the line you, you stand on, whether you're for Donald Trump or against him, whether, how you judge him. I think he's made great gains in you know, energy independence and uh, deregulation, but he's been boggled up a bit by, uh, by this, this Russia investigation. You talk about the Russia investigation. The trouble about that is that the campaign had said again and again earlier on there'd be no contacts. You've had Flynn, who was sacked for lying. You have Sessions recused. You have Don Jr. and Kushner going to a meeting with dirt on offer. I mean, that notion of no contacts, uh, that just wasn't true, was it? No, it wasn't true on the Bush, I'm sorry, on the, on the uh, Trump side. It wasn't true on the Clinton side. Both sides were talking to Russians. A lot of Clinton supporters were making millions off of Russia, while the campaign itself was accusing uh, uh, Trump supporters of having meetings with Russia. The fact of the matter is that there are constant contacts between Americans and Russians, just like there are from, between Brits and Russians, and uh, there's nothing wrong Offering dirt on opponents, constant meetings like I, that I, I, with I, Russian I, officials. That, no, actually, if I had received that request or for a meeting, I would have bucked it upstairs to the lawyers or the opposition research department because it's a pretty sticky wicket. But uh, at the Donald Trump campaign, we didn't have in-house lawyers and we didn't have an opposition research department. So I can see how a family member not accustomed to what would be appropriate might fall into that trap. John, what's your take on this? I, I was reading uh, other members of the CIA, uh, retired uh, senior people, saying it was a classic soft approach from Russia. What do you make of this whole Russian dynamic and colluding story? Uh, I believe indeed it was a Russian approach, that we saw them on the cyber side fishing and looking to get into our system and having success there. I think on the human intelligence side, I think what they were doing with Don Trump Jr. was exactly that. They knew that that fishing hole was worth going to. They must have had information about him, that he would be receptive to this. They fished and he bit. Now that subsequent meeting would be to try to get a sense of whether they bucked it upstairs to the lawyers. Did they buck it upstairs to security and call the FBI like they should have? And the fact that they didn't would have been a signal to the Russians to continue. Now we have no sense whether that went on or not. We have you know specific pieces, and, but the investigators will know. And frankly, if in fact, they're completely innocent. It's not clear to me why they would continue to hide and lie and obfuscate rather than just try to work with the investigators to get this done. I suppose that's why the investigation has continued and continued. In terms of what we saw even in the last 24 hours, that sudden ban on transgender people in the military. John, do you think that is a classic tactic of trying to change the narrative, uh, throwing up deliberately divisive lines ahead of the midterms next year? Well, it's really hard to figure out what President Trump is up to. It, it, it plays to a certain political base. I think there was a uh, bill going through Congress that had uh, some issues related to the transgender not supporting military paying for the operations. And I think he went a little bit further and, and did the ban. Now that's obviously very hard. You have a family of nobody who's ever served in a patriotic sense working for their government telling people that they can't serve and they can't fight for their country. And I, I, don't, I don't think that sits well with a lot of people. Michael, do you expect Jeff Sessions to be in post this time next week, given everything we've seen played out in public in the last week or so? Well, first of all, as a veteran of the United States Army Infantry, I can tell you most veterans I've spoken to and most of the active duty military that I speak to support the president and his decision. And the decision did not come from the top of Donald Trump's head. It was, it was the advice he got from his generals in the Pentagon. This is not a political issue. It's a war fighting issue. 
But as, as for Jeff Sessions, I expect uh, that he's going nowhere. Donald Trump is a different kind of president. The fact that he's expressing public displeasure with Jeff Sessions is really unusual for Washington. It's really unusual for London. But this is the Donald it's Trump It's unusual. President. I mean, what has happened to loyalty? What has happened to loyalty? He demands it, but doesn't seem to dish it out much in return. Well, I don't think that's true. I've seen Donald Trump be extremely loyal to people. I, I also believe that there's a method to this, and, and the, the, the Trump uh, White House wants more out of, their, uh, out of their Department of Justice, and now already we're getting more. I don't expect Sessions to be sacked for this. I expect he and Donald Trump to get on the same page, and I think it's much ado about nothing. Just a quick final thought with you, John, a twin thought. Do the public much care about all of the things we've just been talking about? Uh, how much of the main agenda is actually being done? That's true. I think pe people in, in the country are focused on a lot of other things, health care, uh, the economy, and a number of other issues. But there are issues that are long term here. You know, attacking your institutions, attacking public servants, attacking the people that work for you can't be a good thing for the long term. Now, I don't think people in the country are focused on that. They like to see the president shaking things up, but I do think that there, there's, there's tears in the fabric there that are gonna come back to haunt him, frankly. Michael, just a quick final thought for you because uh, you've had to testify in recent weeks uh, on the whole uh, Russia thing. I mean, you said you've had to liquidate your children's college fund to, to pay the legal bills. I mean, give me an idea. We spent a lot of time on the program talking about this Russia investigation. What is it like being in the crosshairs personally for someone like yourself? Oh, it's disruptive, uh, most of all. And the fact that we were brought into this by uh, a, con a congresswoman who brought my wife up in a public hearing televised to millions, we've been enduring a lot of threats coming in from people anonymously, threatening to burn my house down with my children in it, and then preparing for this hearing, which, you know, I volunteered to do. I, I'm in this life. I understand that I'm therefore, you know, uh, uh, I can't complain too much. But it gets expensive, and, and especially when you understand that this Russia thing is all about delaying Donald Trump's agenda. This will amount to naught. I'm telling your viewers now, this will, nothing will come of this that has anything at all to do with Russia. Well, we shall see, because there are so many investigations going on. Just a simple question, though, to you, Michael. Why do you think you need a lawyer? Uh, I've been, I worked in Congress for years, worked in committee hearings, over 100 of them. Uh, I know uh, many people in the FBI. I've worked with the FBI across the, my 30-year career. Uh, I have no legal exposure, but I, I, I need a navigator through this process. Don't forget, you know, Martha Stewart wasn't put to jail uh, for uh, insider trading. She was put to jail okay. by, uh, by, you know, by a false statement to the FBI. I don't want to get into something accidentally. Okay, final word to you, John. Uh, if there is indeed a session sacking, and if indeed he goes after Robert Mueller, the special counsel, as so many people think uh, he may be tempted to do, what would be the consequences, briefly, on those things? Well, I think a number of senators and congressmen have made it clear what the consequences would be. I don't think they would support it. I think that might be the break between Congress and the White House, and I think it would be tragic if that happens. Well, gentlemen, there we have to leave it. Uh, John, uh, John Seifer and uh, Michael Caputo, thank you so much for taking time to speak to us on today's programme. Thank you so much.